Uh, so what's their history in the UK? Because as I, I've only looked into it a little bit, but they, they were, the, well, there was a fishery for them, I think, at one point, and then that sort of collapsed. I don't know if they completely disappeared. I mean, you all know a lot more this than me, but then they've sort of come back now. So what, yeah, what, what's the history of them? Yeah, so you're right. So there was um, an aristocratic sports fishery uh, for Atlantic bluefin tuna off uh, the northeast coast, so off, um, off Scarborough. And that developed in the 1930s. Um, and it, it was developed quickly, and uh, people flocked from all over the world to try and catch a glimpse or try and catch one of the elusive, they called them the Yorkshire tunnies. Um, and in fact, uh, a lesser known point is that the United Kingdom actually held a world record for a rod and line caught bluefin tuna. Uh, which we, the gentleman that um, set that the caught fish actually took the record from a guy in uh, Nova Scotia. Um, I can't remember how big the fish was, several hundred kilos, but massive animals. But you're absolutely right. So the, the fishery kind of collapsed quite spectacularly uh, in 1953. Um, and the fish were essentially not ever really seen again after that season. Um, and in fact, I think to this day, um, we as part of the Tunis UK project, we, we collect sightings from, uh, from, well, from anywhere, in fact. People are uh, welcome to submit sightings via our website, which is www.tunisuk.org. Um, and we've yet to hear of bluefin being seen off the Yorkshire coast um, recently. Um, isn't that weird? There, that they, there was so many, so, sorry, isn't that no, weird sorry, that, there was, um, that there was so many off Yorkshire and then they've just never not recovered it's strange isn't it yeah it's um it is weird um th th there are a couple of caveats to it so the, the first one is that um the the yorkshire tunny was only ever really sort of found um because of the commercial herring fishery so uh, at that period of time there was um well it was the commercialization of, of herring fishing so steam vessels would, would steam off 20 to 40 miles offshore to the herring grounds and they would fish for herring and in the, so the, the late 1920s, uh, reportedly, the herring fishing boats would actually complain that the tuna who were there. So they'd sort of report back about these, these monstrous nuisance fish that were just kind of in the way. Uh, and the, sort of the story got back to a few fishermen, and then the, the fishermen would actually go out, sort of with the, the, the aristocratic guys would go out with the, the herring fishing, fishing boats, which are big, sort of 15 to 20 meter steamers. And they'd use that as a mothership and they'd launch a small skiff and they'd kind of, they'd actually just chuck a, chuck a hooked bait in the water by the herring boat and the tuna would come and take it. And they'd launch this small skiff and essentially what would happen is that the, kind of the wealthy gentleman on the, rod, rod, on the rod at one end of the, the skiff would hold on to the tuna. And then a, a young man at the other end would do the majority of the work, but using his oars. So he'd paddle a gate to the direction the tuna was swimming, and they'd just kind of do that until the tuna knackered out. <laughs> um, but that is sort of digressing. That herring fishery collapsed as well. Um, so tuna don't spawn off the British Isles, not that we know. Um, so they're here to, to feed. Um, they're sort of here to try and find about some about five to fifteen percent of their body weight every single day. And um, you know, you would surmise that if the food that they're here to eat disappeared then they, they possibly they might might come back um additionally there was a commercial fishery for them uh in the north sea at the time so several nations so germany united kingdom to a small degree but mainly nordic fisheries so um germany norway sweden denmark um all fished blue tuna quite heavily um and I mean, it wasn't just they, they disappeared from the Yorkshire coast, they disappeared from the whole North Sea. It, it, the reason that it is still interesting is that actually bluefin have recently reappeared uh, back to Nordic regions. So Sweden, Denmark, the coast of Norway. Um, but we are yet, yet to see them in any sort of appreciable numbers um, off the northeast coast. However, uh, and sort of as sort of the work of the Tunis UK project um, suggests uh, that there's actually there are an awful lot off seasonally off of the southwest or off, sort of, off of Atlantic facing coasts. So it's likely that they are in the North Sea it's just maybe they're not being sighted yet or I mean it's a, it's a big place isn't it so. 
it is yeah it's a big place and you know um you could probably split it up into several different eco regions if you wanted um they, i'd say actually they are in the north sea but they're not off the scarborough coast okay um, so they you know the waters are between uh, sweden and denmark so the um the Kattegat, um which is sort of an inch i'm not sure but a surrounded body of water uh, adjacent to the north sea in the northeast uh, bluefin uh, have been sighted there for the last four or five years and incidentally there's a sort of a uh, uh, a tagging program which we collaborate with uh, just throughout there working on bluefin tuna um and reports back are generally that you know bluefin are back in, in fairly appreciable numbers just how many there are it's a million dollar question <laughs> literally because we were just talking yeah